chime bells of Marcus Yi, a set of well-tuned Carillon of 65 bronze bells unearthed in today's Hubei province, is considered to be one of the most astonishing archaeological discoveries in recent history. How does this ancient instrument sound? Does it still work? And how does it feel to play the 2,400-year-old giant musical instrument? Today, we'll get to know someone who knows the answers to all these questions. The chime bells are a member of the percussion instrument family in China that has a history of well over 2,000 years. Cast with bronze, a set of chime bells consists of bells in different sizes arranged to the order of pitch, which are hung on a frame. Different tones can be produced when hitting the bells with a wood hammer or a wooden rod. The chime bells of Marcus Yi is so far the biggest, finest and most intact set of chime bells ever discovered in China. The bells were unearthed in the late 1970s in Suizhou City, Hubei province, from the tomb of Marcus Yi, a ruler of the state of Zheng, who lived about 2,400 years ago during the early Warring States period. To the thrill of the excavators, the chime bells could still produce beautiful and accurate musical tones, even after being soaked in a pool of water for probably thousands of years. As one of the few to have hands-on experience playing music on the original chime bells of Marcus Yi, Tan Jun, conductor and director of the Chinese Instrumental Music Department of Wuhan Conservatory of Music, knows only too well how it felt to play the instrument. A reporter gave me a photo he took, and that's how I found out that I was actually kneeling before the instrument when I struck the first note on the chime bells that day. I'm talking about the original excavated chime bells of Marquis E. I did not adopt any bold or fancy performance postures when playing it. I should say that I played it in the most careful way while trying to convey the strong emotions the composer and myself wanted to express through the music. Tan Jun was referring to his close encounter with the famed chime bells of Marcus Yi during a pre-performance recording session in the year 1997. On July the 1st of that year, at the celebration ceremony on the establishment of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, a symphony piece, 1997, Heaven, Earth and Man, composed by famous Chinese composer Tan Dun, was performed. Chime bells were part of the orchestra. Tan Jun was lucky enough to be one of the musicians to sound the chime bells. The first note of the whole set of chime bells in the symphony was played by me, because I was assigned to play in the big bell section. For preservation of the ancient relic, a replica of the chime bells of Marcus Yi was used during the live performance of the celebration ceremony, but the original chime bells of Marcus Yi were used in the pre-performance recording sessions of the symphony piece, 1997, Heaven, Earth and Man. That recording session was the last time the original chime bells were played, till now. Tan Jun felt completely awed when he first set his eyes on the 2,400-year-old chime bells. He remembers the exact time and date he first saw them. It was 6 p.m. on June the 13th, 1997. When the door of the concert hall was opened, we filed in, and I felt that all the cells and senses in me had been instantly awakened upon seeing the instrument. It was hard to describe that awe-stricken feeling of the moment. We were marveling what great geniuses our ancestors must have been to make such exquisite and grand musical instruments. Unfolding before Tan's eyes, then, were by far the heaviest musical instrument in the world, 
with the bells weighing more than 2,500 kilograms. According to Hubei Provincial Museum, the bell frame measures a total length of 7.48 meters at a height of 2.65 meters. The whole set of the chime bells of Marcus Yi were arranged in eight groups in order of size and pitch. They are hung in three rows on the L-shaped copper and wood structure. The bells in each row differ from one another in shape and size. The tones they emanate are also different. The 19 smaller bells on the upper level are used to produce clear and loud tones, while the 33 medium-sized button bells on the middle level were for melody. Another 12 pieces of larger button bells on the lower level were for accompaniment. An additional big bell sits in the center of the lower level. To play such a huge instrument, five musicians are needed. In addition, a total of 3,755 inlay inscriptions on the bell body present valuable information regarding the theory of music, the number and pitch of the bells, and their position and installation on the frame. The chime bell of Marcus Yi of Zheng was cast in the early Warring States period more than 2,400 years ago. Its discovery changed the history of world music. Before it was unearthed, many scholars thought that ancient China's twelve tonalities were introduced from the West. After the excavation of the chime bells of Marcus Yi, music historians measured their sound and found that the total range of this set of chimes spanned five octaves, with a complete central range of twelve semitones, which also allowed the instrument to play almost all the tunes people listen to today. Wan Chuen Wan, former deputy director of Hubei Provincial Museum, where the famed chime bells are housed, generalizes the value of finding the chime bells of Marcus Yi. There are many chime bells unearthed in the country, but this is the largest and most complete set of all. It was delicately manufactured and well preserved. We can now play any kinds of music with it, melodies of all times and from all over the world. There are many inscriptions carved on the bells. There were notes about the musical culture at that time. In ancient China, musical instruments were classified into eight tones, based on their manufacturing materials. They are generally categorized into gold, stone, clay, leather, silk, gourd, bamboo, and wood. Gold refers to instruments made of metal such as copper, with chime bells a representative of the category. In comparison, the Chinese zither, a string instrument, falls into the silk category, whereas the flute is a bamboo. Of all the instruments, chime bells rank the top of the eight tones. Chime bells were generally used in palace music or on very important occasions, such as state banquets and sacrificial ceremonies in ancient times. With its exquisite design and state-of-the-art level of craftsmanship, the chime bells of Marcus Yi represent the highest achievements in music, culture, metallurgy, casting, and other aspects at that time. Standing before such a historical masterpiece of a musical instrument, Tan Jun was emotionally overwhelmed. The chime bells carry with the glory of the Chinese history. I've never seen something so remarkable. Everyone knows how complicated it can be to produce bronze musical instruments like this. It's hard to imagine our ancestors produced them more than 2,400 years ago. How could we not be awed by the ingenuity and achievements of our ancestors? This particular musical set has only been rung three times since its excavation several decades ago. For the first time in 1978, the year it was excavated, then, in 1984, and in 1997, during the celebration ceremony of the establishment of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Recalling that unforgettable pre-performance recording evening in 1997, Tan Jun says he and his fellow performers held a special ceremony prior to the performance. We paid respect to our ancestors, thanking them for giving us such a great musical instrument. 
which is also a great cultural vessel carrying the Chinese emphasis in Ruchu. As Chinese, I feel proud. The recording took 12 hours from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. the next morning. During the audition, no one dared to play it with normal intensity. Yet the music piece wants to convey powerful feelings and the heaviness of China's history during the 100 years since the 1840s, so it was a bit challenging. If I hit the bells too hard, I was fearful of damaging the Asian bells. If I don't use any force at all, I couldn't express the emotions of the music. It was challenging. The recording session was a success for Tan Jun and the orchestra, as was their live performance during the celebration ceremony in 1997. And this is how Tan Jun commented about the melodies played out on the chime bells of Marcus Yi. For chime bell music, you have to listen to it live in theatre. A recorded piece can never match the real sound of chime bells in theatre. It's almost like the ancient craftsmen of the chime bells have given the musical set a soul that one could only feel when he's on sight. But Tan Jun's involvement with the chime bells of Marcus Yi did not stop there. In fact, Tan Jun's life and career had been interwoven with chime bells since long before 1997. Overall, Tan Jun has spent more than three decades working on developing chime bells music. In 1985, Tan Jun was admitted to the folk music department of the Hubei Institute of Arts, the predecessor of the Wuhan Conservatory of Music. On the first day of admission, Tan Jun followed his teacher and classmates to perform at the Hubei Provincial Museum. The museum has been cooperating with universities to promote chime music by giving special performances using a complete set of replicas of chime bells of Marcus Yi. Tan Jun played in the small orchestra once every week throughout his four-year college years. Originally, my role in the band was to play the sheng, a reed pipe wind instrument. But when we performed in a small band, Sometimes I would play the chime bells for a while. During the process, I discovered that different shapes of the hammer, different materials with varying levels of softness, can have an impact on the tones of the chime bells. I experimented on it. For example, if I want to generate a softer yet lingering sound on the bells, I would find a material that can make the hammer softer, or simply wrap it with cloth. But why was he so interested in the music hammers? That's because although the chime bells of Marcus Yi were well preserved, when it was unearthed, the unearthed wooden hammers used to strike the chime bells have mostly gone rotten after being soaked in water for such an eternity. The first music hammers used by Tan Jun and his classmates were replicas fashioned after the nail hammer style drawn in pictures on cultural relics while studying for his master's degree, Tan Jun began his own research on chime hammers. He designed and produced 40 or 50 kinds of music hammers, including the traditional nail hammer shapes, round-headed ones, long sticks and brushes. During the research process, I found that the small chime hammers cannot bring out the right tone of the big bells, and vice versa. A large hammer cannot bring the smaller bells properly, but if we use it on the small bells on the top tier, it is more in line with the temperament of the small bell. The tone produced sounds pure, bright and clear, and carries far. But with the bigger bells, you need a hammer with a slightly softer head. Tan Jun's research on chime hammers came into the spotlight in 1996 when composer Tan Dun came to the Wuhan Conservatory of Music to audition for the symphony 1997 Heaven, Earth and Man. The composer even brought a large bag of various western percussion hammers to try out on the chime bells. 
I remember clearly that he bought them from Japan, including a marimba hammer, a brush for playing snare drum, and a wire brush. When we used the wire brush on the chime bells, it made almost no sound. The composer was worried. We even tested the bamboo handle of the hammer to see if it could bring out the right note on the bell. But the sound produced was too loud and the lingering note was coarse. The composer was not particularly happy with it. So I said, don't worry, I will continue to look for the right hammer. Going back home, I was washing dishes and I spotted the cleaning brush. I thought, why don't I give this a try? That's what I did and it sounded nice with the rice bowls. But would it work on the chimes? I hurried to our concert hall in excitement, and after checking it out on the bells, the composer was quite happy with it. So, a bamboo brush awakened the 2,400-year-old chimes. And Tan Jun was also lucky enough to be selected as one of the chime bell players at the celebration ceremony of the establishment of the Hong Kong SAR in 1997. Even today, Tan Jun's study on new hammers continues on. The reason we study the hammers is not to meet the needs of performers, but to meet the requirements of composers. Tan Jun is also the first and currently the only person to offer chime, bell and drum performance courses in colleges and universities across the country. In the Chu Ba Musician's Studio, presided over by Tan Jun, chime bells are the main instrument. <laughs> it happens all the time. Sometimes a performer's mind might be focusing on something else. Although he clearly wants to hit this spot on the bell, the hammer ends up landing somewhere else. To a layman, playing the chime bells looks easy, where you use a bell hammer to hit the chime. In actual fact, it requires high accuracy in terms of where you land your hammer head. Otherwise, you are easily off the note. The most amazing thing about the chime bells is its side drum sound. Its tone is always high. The front drum sound and the side drum sound are different. They are all different, see? Tan was explaining a marvelous feature of the chime bells, which is, each bell can produce two different tones, depending on where you land your hammer. You see these protruding buttons on the bells? We call them Mei. The biggest difference between Chinese musical bells and Western chiming clocks is that the sounds of Western chiming clocks, such as the large round bells we often hear on bell towers, are not attenuated. They often sound like this. Chinese music bells can have 12 tones. The length of the lingering sound will generally fade away in 3 to 5 seconds, thanks to the function of these buttons. If the bell surface is glossy, the sound it produces will have a long lingering effect, lasting like that. But if you have the buttons, they can attenuate the sound. This is where ancient Chinese people were smart. In 1985 to 1997, Tan Jun accumulated a large number of music pieces and a large number of performance methods in the research and practice of chime bells. And his understanding of chime bells became more in depth. In 2002, the Youth Chimes Orchestra of the Wuhan Conservatory of Music was officially established. Every Thursday at noon, rhythmic chime bell music floats around the rehearsal hall. This tradition has been maintained for 21 years. 
我们平常在宾隆里约的这样一个课程的教学过程中 ，When teaching the course Rights and Music, we usually explain to students two concepts at the very first class: the eight virtues and the eight tones of Chinese music. The eight virtues are the traditional values that emphasize filial piety, brotherhood, loyalty, trustworthiness, etiquette, righteousness, integrity, sense of shame, and sense of happiness. The eight tones are the classification of musical instruments according to the material, which are gold, stone, clay, leather, silk, gourd, bamboo, and wood. I often tell the students, "You don't need to come back to the class again after this first class if you don't bother memorize these sixteen words." In Tanjun's mind, etiquette and music go hand in hand in the Chinese tradition. He wanted his students not only to master music performance skills, but also the essence of Chinese culture. In addition to teaching, Tanjun has also created a large amount of chime music. With themes such as ancient palace banquets and the cultures of the ancient kingdom of Chu, which once reigned present-day central and southern China, in recent years the orchestra has given performances showcasing ancient chime bell melodies, the culture of ancient kingdoms in China, and contemporary music. From the 1990s, chime bell performances have often appeared on the stage of well-renowned concert halls, often causing a sensation among audiences abroad. Tanjun is also often invited to participate in such performances and lectures, introducing his music from China's ancient times to the world. Everyone likes beautiful things, whether in form or sound. Chime bells represent an ancient instrument from the East. So wherever the chime bells go, people will marvel at the beauty of the form of chime bells and sincerely applaud the wisdom of the Chinese people. Chime bells, such as the ones unearthed from the tomb of Marcus Yi, are the embodiment of the great achievement in bronze casting. Proficiency in music science and the wisdom of people in ancient China. Today, people like Tan Jun are the ones who give the ancient musical instrument a new lease of life. With that, we conclude this episode of Footprints. I'm Bob Jones. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in hearing more about the lives of ordinary but incredible people in China, follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Just key in Footprints, and you can find more stories anytime, anywhere. We'll see you next time.